The academy, typically bustling with energetic students during the day, had taken on a much more sinister energy under the gloomy veil of a Friday evening. A heavy silence blanketed the school, amplifying the eerie anticipation that hovered in the air. Amidst the haunting atmosphere, a young girl named Eddie found herself drawn towards the unknown. A falling out with her best friend had led to painful isolation, and in her desperation, she was willing to face the terrifying legend of the academy, Hanakusan of the Toilet. Climbing the ancient staircase leading to the third floor, her heart pounded with anxiety. Her desire for reconciliation pushed her forward to the girl's bathroom. As she entered, the bulb flickering cast trembling shadows across the damp tiles and walls stained with time. From the third stall, a chill draft whispered tales of the ghostly occupant, making Eddie shudder. Pushing down the rising fear, she walked towards it. Her voice trembled as she whispered into the cold silence three times. Anaku-san? Are you there? While knocking. Silence hung in the air before the door swung open. The toilet started gurgling and shaking. Then she was answered by a tiny voice so chilling that it turned Eddie's blood to ice. Yes, I'm here. Materializing from the toilet, the ghost stood. Her red skirt seemed like blood in the gloomy bathroom. Swallowing her fear, Eddie managed to stammer out her wish. I want my friend to speak to me again. I want us to be friends like before. Please grant my wish. Anaku-san considered her for a moment, the air growing colder. She was about to answer when an odd sound echoed in the toilet. It was a mix of gurgling and creaking, like an old pipe struggling to work. They turned their attention to the toilet. What on earth? Anaku-san began, her voice trailing off as the toilet seat began to shake violently. With a sudden burst, the lid flew open and a geyser of water shot up, drenching Eddie. Eddie shrieked in surprise, but Anaku-san merely raised an eyebrow in curiosity. From the chaos, another figure emerged, Anaku-kun, a boy dressed in an old-fashioned school uniform. His face held a mischievous grin, his demeanor playful, a stark contrast to the eeriness of Anaku-san. His unexpected arrival took Anaku-san aback. Phew, sorry for the lateness. What did I miss? Anaku-kun asked, looking between the stunned Eri and unimpressed Anaku-san. Why are you here, Anaku-kun? She demanded. His nonchalant reply, I was summoned, but took a wrong turn at the spirit realm. Sparked off a heated argument between the two ghosts. Their voices clashed in the confined space. They bickered over their territories, their duties, and their unexpected encounter. Caught in the midst of this unexpected turn of events, Eddie could only watch, a mix of fear and fascination rooting her to the spot. When Hanoko-san finally turned her attention back to her, Eddie could hardly meet her gaze. Your wish? Anaku-san began, her voice carrying an ominous undertone. Has a price. Your task is to face each of the mysteries of this school alone. Retrieve a charm from each to prove your encounter. Complete this, and your wish shall be granted. Fail, and it will cost you your life. Anaku-san said as her eyes sparkled with mischief. With determination, Eri accepted the daunting task. The prospect of mending her broken friendship was her driving force. Her first encounter was with the Misaki stairs. She found herself navigating through an endless loop of staircases that seemed to defy the laws of physics. It was only through keen observation and quick thinking that she was able to break the loop and retrieve the first charm. Next was the 4pm library. Whispers of untold secrets and riddles filled the air as she went through an impossible maze of bookshelves. It took all her courage to stay calm, solve the riddles, and earn the second charm. For a while, Eddie persevered. 
However, nothing could prepare her for the hell of mirrors. Upon entering, she was confronted by a grotesque reflection of herself, a manifestation of her deepest fears and insecurities. It constantly reminded her of her loneliness, of her friend's abandonment. The relentless torment started to fracture Eddie's sanity. This alarming development caught Anoku-kun's attention, who was secretly watching. He returned to the bathroom and confronted Anoku-san, demanding they intervene to help Eddie. She can't take it anymore. The hell of mirrors is too much for her, he argued. She chose this path. It's not our place to interfere. Anaku-san dismissed his concerns. Anaku-san's casual dismissal of Anaku-kun's concerns made his blood boil. We need to help her. Their disagreement was intensifying when Anaku-san, in her usual scornful tone, said, You think you're some sort of savior? Don't make me laugh. You're just a killer, trying to wash away his guilt by playing the hero. Her words cut through Anakukun like a blade. His twin brother's death, his guilt, his endless efforts to make amends. She had thrown it all back in his face. A low growl echoed in his throat, his eyes ablaze with anger. You've gone too far. Anaku-san just laughed. You've crossed the line! He yelled. He summoned his weapon, a spectral knife that morphed into a larger sword. Its ethereal glow filled the bathroom as Anaku-kun charged towards Anaku-san. Anaku-san was quick to react, her own spectral energy pulling into a protective barrier that crackled and shimmered in the air. The battle between them was fierce and chaotic. The sword of Anokukun clashed against Anokukun's shield, each impact sending sparks flying and causing the very air around them to ripple with their supernatural power. Anokukun, fueled by his anger, sent wave after wave of attacks. He lashed out, his strikes becoming more forceful and desperate, each one met by Anokusan's defense. At the height of their confrontation, the bathroom was unrecognizable, the mirrors were shattered, their broken fragments scattered over the floor. Anaku-san, fueled by desperation, manipulated the water from the toilets. The liquid twisted, forming into a tornado that hurtled towards Anaku-kun. Anaku-kun's form flickered in and out of solidity, while retaliating with a wave of energy that shattered the bathroom stalls, showering the area with splinters of wood. Anaku-san barely dodged the debris. Suddenly, a shrill scream pierced through the chaos of their battle. Both Anoku-kun and Anoku-san froze, the terrifying cry reverberating through the bathroom. Without a word, they stopped their fight and rushed towards the source, only to find Eddie's lifeless body sprawled on the floor. The sight of the lifeless girl brought a wave of regret that washed over Anoku-san. I didn't want this, she confessed quietly, her voice echoing hauntingly in the room. I merely wanted her to understand the reality of friendship. Anaku-kun stared at her, confused. What are you talking about? I, too, once had a friend in this school. She revealed, her spectral eyes distant. But as she grew older, she forgot about me, about our friendship. It was a harsh lesson that friendships don't always last. The confession hung heavily in the air. He knew the pain of being forgotten, left behind by the relentless march of time. Slowly, he reached out and placed a hand on her shoulder. You're not alone anymore. With a surprised look, Anoku-san turned to face him. The shared understanding sparked an unlikely alliance born from the shared guilt and the resolve to prevent any more students from meeting a fate like Eddie's. Next time, Anaku-kun declared, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. We'll make sure to guide them better. Together. Their decision marked the start of a new partnership. The school bathroom, once the site of their heated battle, became the symbol of their shared commitment. As the guardians of the school, Anaku-kun and Anaku-san, vowed to guide their summoners together.